What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. Kelly Young and I woke up this morning. She bought some stone crab traps that you have to put together and she made a how-to video on how to do that and we came out here and set them and showed you guys the whole thing on her channel. I told her though, I'm ready to get out and try to catch something offshore. We're nine miles off the coast of Stewart, Florida and for any of y'all who catch mahi-mahi, you guys know that when you find big patches of sargasm weed, watch this. Oh, I missed it, Ozzy. Go back and get it. You'll know. There's so much plastic, it's insane. You'll know that when you find sargasm weed patches like this, we call them weed lines, that you're going to find dolphin for the most part. Well, it's mid February, first week of February, and there's not many dolphin around. But what is around? is thousands of these jellyfish and more plastic than I can even describe. Right here, since I've been doing my intro, I've already picked up two big pieces, a quart, a bag, a straw, microplastic, little teeny microplastic, and we've drifted over about a 10 foot area. And there's more trash than, than you could ever even, like, I can't even fathom this much trash being out here. Just a minute ago, we had this big, beautiful leatherback pop up, and he started feeding in one of these weed lines. Once I realized what he was feeding on, I then knew we could help save him, and we started picking up trash. Look at the jellyfish, though. All right, you guys, we had to take a break from trolling for a second to show you guys something. Kelly and I watched a show the other night on Netflix about plastic, and I'm gonna put it in the link below because I think it's such an important video for all of us to watch. I'm not a very big conservationist, naturalist, anti-anything really in life, I believe, to each his own. I mean this with no sarcasm. That's just a, look, this was floating out here. We're 10 miles from land. Plastic is gonna be the death of our earth. And when you watch this show, you're gonna understand just how serious it is. Entire populations of birds, whales, dolphin, everything that lives in this ocean now is getting plastic in their bellies. They're eating it, they're bringing it back to their babies. Kelly and I started using cups like these. They're just aluminum cups. And we're starting to buy water in bulk, buy filters for our sink. Imagine how much we could help the planet if you refilled a cup or refilled one water bottle for a week. Just wash it every day and refill it. That would probably eliminate 20 bottles for the week times every person in America. You're talking about billions. We got to do something to start protecting our planet because this if Kelly and I right now took 10 minutes, 100 yards out of way and 100 yards out of way, in a 10 foot wide patch of sargasm, we, we could fill a five gallon bucket of pieces of plastic smaller than your hand. That'll tell you something. There's a giant leatherback. We don't know if you guys can see him or not, but that thing is huge, probably a thousand pounds. Ziploc bags. If you, this whole thing is full of plastic. Look at that turtle. Eating on something. Why eating them jellyfish? Yeah. Look at this. Cool. Is
you can spend your whole life out in this ocean and see tops two or three of those things and we just had one all up on the boat didn't bother him didn't spook him he came up ate whatever it is he was eating hopefully it wasn't plastic if he was feeding on jellyfish 99 percent sure he ate some plastic see that lays potato chip bag there's a plastic there and there's a jellyfish right there there's a cobia with him. No oh way. yeah, there's a cobia yes. with him. Let's go. There's a piece of plastic right there. See it? Yep. See the jellyfish right there? Yep. You almost can't tell the difference. See all the jellyfish? Oh, they're everywhere. Right there, look. See the jellyfish? Oh yeah. There's equally as much plastic. I never, I mean, I have noticed plastic getting worse and worse over the days, but until I saw that show on Netflix, like, we're not talking about two birds or four birds. Everybody heard of the one sea turtle with a straw on his nose, and that was unfortunate. When you see this and you see thousands of birds laying dead on the beach, and the plastic that they ate is in the bones, and it's still exactly the same as it was when the bird ate it except for the bird isn't. Look right here, look at the plastic. There's white plastic, there's a plastic cup, there's a little plastic bag which looks identical to a jellyfish. Right next to each other. There's more plastic, more plastic, plastic, a plastic bag. Everywhere. A lot of people's gonna say, oh, why didn't you pick it up? Trust me when I say, we're picking it up but you would need a barge to hold it all. They look so much like jellyfish, it's insane. Plastic bags after plastic bags after plastic bags. Ugh. Guaranteed 110% that sea troll that we just saw has a bunch of plastic bags in its stomach. I mean, look at the resemblance. You could barely tell as a human the difference floating in the water. An animal's not going to know the difference. How many pieces did you just pick up in a four foot section? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Wait, look, look. Seven. Eight. <clears throat> That's terrible. Oh, look. Nine. Look. Like, and this is what you call microplastic, is when the bigger pieces of plastic just break down. Because it never, it never just goes away. It'll just break down into smaller micro pieces, which, I mean, it's studies shown even from tiny animals, like your plankton in the water will eat it. And then goes, and it goes right up the food chain. So what does that say for us humans in the future when we're eating seafood? We're going to be eating plastic in the future. That's terrible. There's more. Oh my gosh. I was actually just talking to my mom the other day saying, I have, nowadays I cannot go offshore and see a patch of seaweed without plastic in it. It's impossible. It's so sad. Look at this, plastic bottle cap. These little things like this are what's attracting the birds. They don't know that it's not a little bait fish, plastic cap. I don't even know what that is. It's got rope on it. Right here, we're all guilty of buying these for the kids. That's a little yogurt bottle. Now, when that big leather back was in here feeding, he's trying to get the jellyfish that looks identical to a jellyfish but it's not this is the no that's not a straw I thought that might have been a straw look at the trash though I couldn't get it all if I had to a little juice squirt bottle that you see at the gas stations right here that's what that leatherback was eating. 
and this is what's laying next to it. Like Kelly said before, there is zero chance that that beautiful leatherback that you might not ever see in your lifetime, you won't even see it in an aquarium at SeaWorld. But if you're out here in this ocean, you have a chance of seeing one. If he eats all those plastics and dies, we'll never see him. I'm telling you that show I watched the other night changed my opinion on everything in life as far as this ocean. They put a submarine down 2,000 foot and the ocean floor looks just like this. Imagine that. That's what the ocean floor looks like in 2,000 foot of water. All human trash. Because all of us, each and every one of us, are irresponsible with what we do in life. That's crazy. I can assure you one thing. If this ocean doesn't have life in it, we're not going to be alive. Look at all that. That's right where that turtle was feeding. Thankfully we got that out because that would definitely tangle them. But hold on, I'll be right back. We got more. We got rope. Not, oh, oh no. We got rope, we got plastic. You need some oil, we got you. Need some yogurt, we got you. All this trash and tons more, just like it in the back of the boat, out of one little weed line. Now, unfortunately, for this weed line, I gotta get back and get my kids from school so I can't spend all day out here. We are going to come back and I'm gonna give both my kids a dip net and we're gonna pick up trash tomorrow if this weed line's still here. <laughs> what? What are you doing though? I don't want to get my feet wet. You guys, we just got our butts kicked coming in from out there. We were almost 10 miles offshore. The wind started blowing like 20 miles an hour out of the southeast. And that was rough, wasn't it? Yes. So, all that trash was out there on a weed line. And you're thinking, well, that might not be that much trash in a giant ocean. We just came in Stewart Inlet. And look at this. Crab pots. McDonald's, juice cups, just look at this. As far as you can see around that away, and as far as you can see that away, you guys, each and every one of us have to start changing the way we're living and changing the way we're doing things because if we don't, we're not gonna have anything the heck with our grandchildren, our children. When Jake and Luke are 25 years old, if trash keeps going like this, what are they gonna have to look forward to? Nobody's out here picking this stuff up. It's definitely just stockpiling. I guarantee if we go up in those bushes up here, there's trash on top of trash up here. Look at this. Like, I don't even know what that is, but that's the second one that I found. So I found, when I was metal detecting with my dad, I found hundreds of these on the beach. I think they're from, they're from the islands. That's all I know. So this one piece of trash could have came from anywhere in that direction. So the Gulf Stream, which flows out in front of Florida, is coming out of the south, headed north. So this trash could have come from Venice, Louisiana, the Keys, Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, the Bahamas. But I guarantee you, they're not the only ones who are causing the trash problem. So are we right here at home. I mean, quick stop straw. This is the same spray foam that I use for alligator hunting. And here's a cap of it. Palm trees. Look at this. I, I don't even know what all this stuff is. Now, I know most of y'all that follow me a lot are saying, man, you just did a video of finding a car. You did a shark. What happened to your catch, clean, and cooks? Trust me, I'm not done doing catch, clean, and cooks. I'm not done doing my normal style videos. The weather's just been terrible. Today, we thought we were gonna do a catch, clean, and cook. I thought I was gonna cook that bonita on this video, but I'm gonna save that for another video. I saw this trash on the way in. Before I'm done though, let's walk right down here real quick.
You guys, this isn't in some foreign third world country, crazy remote island. This is Stewart Inlet. Right there is one of the richest neighborhoods in Florida. That's Sailfish Point. Multi-million dollar homes. And look at all this garbage. We got jails full of people, small, big crimes. They could be out here picking this up. Me and my family could be picking this up and you guys can be picking this up. But until we start doing it, it's never gonna get done. Right now I'm gonna let Kelly turn the camera and film down there. As far as your eyes can see, it's trash on top of trash. It's mind blowing to me. We're gonna sit here and pick some of this stuff up. Like I said earlier in the video, I gotta get home and get my kids from school so I can't stay long. We will be back. Do me a huge favor and just think about what you've seen in this video and whatever you can do to help cut back, whether it's just anything. I don't even wanna give you any ideas. You figure it out and just try to cut back on plastic and where it ends up because this is insane. Just simply recycling it isn't gonna help. We gotta stop buying so much plastic, plastic everything, because it ends up everywhere. And this is what just ended up right here. Imagine, well, you guys know I always need shoes. I got one here, look at this one. Did you find another one? Yeah. I flip it flop in the boot. There you go. Got some bottles, uh, Tito's. Hey, that's your favorite. Hey, I hope this video didn't offend you. I hope you don't take anything I say out of context. We just need to start cleaning up this earth, our home, because it's the only one like it. And when it's done, obviously we're all done. But it's time to get up out of here. We're gonna head home, get ready for some awesome new trips and some definite awesome new catch cleaning cooks. Thanks for following along. I hope you learned something from this. But like my oldest son Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shake. Pompano jigs will get you every single time. Oh. <laughs> Funny thing is, it happens so fast it don't even hurt. But I don't like where we're sitting because of these waves. Yeah, we gotta get out of here. We're gonna pull out of these waves. Alright, I'll see you guys later. If you're out, I'll give you a call. Alright. Thanks. So, I'm gonna show y'all how to oh. hopefully remove a hook. Because Kelly's holding the camera. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Hold this jig straight with one hand and the camera with the other. Hold it right there straight. It's the boat is moving. I don't want to hurt you. I can't hold it. <gasps> Why are you shaking? You ain't the one with the hook in there. I don't have it good enough yet. Are you pinching down the barb? Ow! Ah, hold it straight! Babe, I'm trying! I don't want to hurt you. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Just hold it still. I don't think I got it good enough yet. Oh my goodness. You want to get a picture before you rip it out? Oh, you just did it? That hurts if y'all were wondering. <laughs> Jesus. But fortunately for you guys, that ain't the first time you've ever seen me rip a hook out of my knuckle. Yow! Oh my goodness. Let's go catch a fish.